it's obvious that this ball is falling. But do you know that this ball is also falling now while it goes up? Hello, grade 12s. Welcome to our lesson in free fall where an object moves both up and down, like this. In everyday language, when we say something falls, we probably mean it moves downward, like this. In scientific language, the ball did fall, yes, but it's not the only way a ball can move for its motion to be called falling. In scientific language, an object is in free fall for the whole time when its weight is the only significant vertical force on it. As I push the ball upward, the ball is not in free fall. This is because my hand applies a vertical force on the ball in addition to its weight. The combined effect of these two forces is called the resultant. The resultant force accelerates this ball. Since the resultant force acts upwards, it accelerates the ball upward. So the ball is both moving and accelerating upward. This makes it get faster and faster. Notice that the V for velocity is getting bigger as the object moves upward. Just before it leaves the hand, it's going its fastest. From that moment, the hand does not touch the ball. So the ball's weight is the only significant vertical force on it. So the ball is in free fall. While the hand touched the ball, it made it go faster and faster. In other words, it increased the ball's momentum. The ball's momentum keeps it moving upward, even though it is being pulled downward by its weight. As the ball rises, it gradually loses this momentum. It gets slower and slower as it moves upward. The ball is in free fall because the only force on it is its weight. We say it falls upwards. When it has lost all its momentum, it stops. Its velocity is now zero. Now it turns around and moves downward, getting faster and faster. In other words, its velocity increases as it falls downward. When it gets back to the same height it was thrown from, it has the same magnitude of velocity and the same amount of momentum it had when it had just left the thrower's hand. For the whole time the ball was in the air, it was in free fall. So an object can move upward or downward in free fall. While it moves upward, it slows. And while it moves downward, it gets faster. Why? Throughout free fall, the ball accelerates at the acceleration due to gravity, g. This acceleration is in the same direction as the force which causes it downward. While the ball moves up, it moves in the opposite direction to its acceleration. This makes it go slower and slower until it stops. It stops only for an instant. Although the ball's velocity is zero for that instant, it's still accelerating at the acceleration due to gravity g. While the ball moves down, it moves in the same direction to its acceleration. This makes it go faster and faster. Let's look at some data for upward and downward projectile motion. The ball leaves the thrower's hand at 30 meters per second upward. If we choose upward to be the positive direction, this is positive 30 meters per second. As it rises, it slows, losing approximately 10 meters per second every second. This is because it accelerates at the acceleration due to gravity g, which is about 10 meters per second squared downward. So after a second, its velocity is now approximately 20 meters per second upward. In other words, positive 20 meters per second. During the next second, it slows another 10 meters per second. So at the end of second two, the ball's velocity is positive 10 meters per second. During the next second, the ball slows to zero velocity. In other words, it stops. Now it turns around and starts moving downwards. In other words, it starts moving in a negative direction. It speeds up by approximately 10 meters per second every second. So by the end of second four, its velocity is 10 meters per second downward. 
also written as negative 10 meters per second. By the end of second 5, its velocity is negative 20 meters per second. By the end of second 6, its velocity is negative 30 meters per second. Notice that now the ball is at the same height as it had left the hand. Now the ball falls below the hand's height, still accelerating at 10 meters per second each second. So at the end of second 7, its velocity is negative 40 meters per second. There are many interesting patterns in this data. Can you see them? Notice the upward and downward velocity of the ball at the same height. The magnitudes are the same. So for example, when the ball leaves the thrower's hand, its velocity is 30 meters per second moving upward. We can say a positive 30 meters per second. When the ball moves through the same height on its way down, its velocity again is 30 meters per second, although this time it is moving downward. We can say negative 30 meters per second. There is also an interesting pattern in the time it takes to move from one height back to the same height. For example, it takes three seconds for the ball to travel from the hand up to its highest point. And it also takes three seconds for the ball to travel from the highest point back down to the hand. We call this time symmetry. It takes just as much time for the ball to go up a certain distance as to come back down the same distance. Now, just before we end, we've been using simplified data to help us see the patterns. But remember that the acceleration due to gravity is actually not 10 meters per second squared. Rather, it is closer to 9,8 meters per second squared. So what does the real data of our falling ball look like? Here we have it. Even though the numbers are not as nice to work with, you can see the same patterns in this data. We look again at the upward and downward velocities of the ball at the same heights. And we see again that their magnitudes are the same. And notice the time symmetry. It takes just as long for the ball to rise a certain height as to drop that same height. Well, I hope this was helpful. Remember to look at the other videos in this series. Why don't you visit the Mindset website at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye. Thank you.